Alright, what's up YouTube? Uh, in the previous video we ended with solving the problem of maintaining order and integrity in the chain. And we did this by adding the previous hash fields to each block. So as you can see, whenever one hash is changed, uh, maybe because someone changed the content of one block, all the hashes that follow that block will be changed as well, which invalidates the chain. So this builds in you know, pretty good security. So let's pick up where we left off and uh, add all this functionality to our blockchain. So if you want to code along, um, you can open your block.js file and we'll start by adding the previous hash field. So this dot previous hash equals the previous hash. Of course, we'll have to put that in the list of parameters. Just a second. So previous hash. All right, and of course, since we need to uh, incorporate it into the hash as well, we'll just add the previous hash. Okay, so next up is to create a method on our, on our blockchain that checks if the blockchain is valid. So uh, open up your blockchain.js file and we'll start by, you know, since we, we changed the list of parameters to create a new block, we'll have to add the previous hash field as well. And of course, with the Genesis block, that was that's gonna be zero because you know it's the first block. And of course, with this method, we'll do that as well. So new block dot previous hash equals this dot git last block dot hash. All right. Uh, the next step is of course to check if the whole chain is gonna be valid. And we'll do that by creating a new method called isChainValid that loops over the whole chain and you know checks for the validity. Uh, we'll start by putting the chain into a separate variable, which is gonna be easier. And then we'll create a for loop. So i equals zero, i is less than chain.length, All right, and in this for loop, we'll have uh, two if statements. So in the first if statement, if statement, we calculate the hash of the block contents again with the calculate hash function, and we compare that to the actual hash that's in the block. And so if any of the contents were changed, um, the, the the hashes won't match, and we'll return that the block uh, the yeah that the block was invalid. So let's put that into code. If chain i dot hash is not equal to chain i dot you know recalculate hash actually like this, uh, we'll just say using template strings that block oh block i has been corrupted. And we'll make our method to return something. In this case, that's gonna be false. And of course, if it's valid, that's gonna be true. But first, we need to check for. Uh, yeah, we need the second if statement. And if the second if statement is gonna compare the hash of the previous block to the actual previous hash field of the current block. So if this doesn't match up, the previous block hash was invalid. So let's say someone changed the previous hash. Uh, the, the previous block's contents, um, then the hash would, would have been changed. And so the previous hash field in the current block wouldn't match up with the hash of the previous block. Wow, that was a mouthful. Okay, so um, yeah, we don't need to check for, for the first block, for the Genesis block, so we'll just do that. So if i is greater than zero and chain i dot previous hash doesn't match up with chain i minus one, so the previous block dot hash. Then we'll also console dot log that block. In this case, i minus one has been corrupted, and we'll also return false. 
Okay, great. Um, and if that's not the case, so if all of those if statements went by, we'll just console.log that the chain is valid and we'll return true. Okay, so now it's time to test it out. Um, now before we do anything, we'll console.log. So in this for loop, we've added uh, five blocks. And before we do anything, we'll just console.log the validity of the chain. So only chain dot is chain valid. And this should of course return true and console.log that the chain is indeed valid. Now for the next step, we'll tamper with, I don't know, let's say uh, the fourth block. So that's at index three, of course, dot data. And we'll just corrupt the data. So we'll keep the sender, it's gonna be oh, polycode. And the receiver is still gonna be YouTube. But the message will have been changed and we'll just say this block has been tampered with. All right. Um, yeah, and next we'll just indeed console.log each block, but to make it things even clearer, we'll show what the, the recalculated hashes of all, the, of all our blocks are, so we can see where things went sideways. So, all right, we'll do, and then of course at the end, we'll just console.log the validity of the chain again, and that should return false. Okay, so let's test that out in the terminal. I'll make this a little bigger. Oh. Okay, so node blockchain.js to start up our node application. And all right, let's just go over this step by step. So that that is the first console.log and here the chain is valid. Then we changed uh, the chain and we'll just see where. So, you know, block zero, block one, block two, and then block three. And the message of course has been changed and it says this block has been tempered with. And in the previous um, block, you can see that the hashes match up. So the hash field and the recalculated hash. And here, this doesn't match up. And so our program caught it and it says block tree has been corrupted and it says false. All right. Now, although we're, you know, well on our way to making an okay blockchain, there are still some problems. Um, you know, with current computers, our blockchain could be spammed with millions of blocks at a time. Since you, if you, if you run our program, you can see that it practically takes like zero seconds to, uh, to create the whole blockchain. Um, but more importantly, our chain is still not really tamper proof. So suppose I, I would change the contents of block two and I would then recalculate its hash and then I would recalculate the hash of block three and so on until the end of the blockchain. That wouldn't be such, uh, such a hassle since, you know, it, it takes no time to recalculate the hash. So we would have changed the data of block two to say something else. So, you know, the amount of a cryptocurrency, for example, and we would have practically hacked the whole blockchain and no one would know. So blockchain solved this by implementing an algorithm called proof of work. I mean, Bitcoin. Basically, this was the first, you know, consensus algorithm to create a, a tamper proof chain. Um, so you basically have to prove you've put in the computational work into creating a block. So the process of doing that is called mining, as you might have heard of. And in Bitcoin, when you mine a block, you get a reward. Um, Achieving proof of work is done by making the hash start with a certain number of zeros and that number is called the difficulty. So for example, if the difficulty is set to four, this is simplified of course, but if the difficulty is set to four, the hash of a block should start with four zeros. But uh, yeah, since we can't change the contents of a block without invalidating it, how would we do that? So the solution is to add a, a random number to a block that's called the nonce. Um, 
mining is, is basically, you know, actually literally the process of guessing the nonce so that the hash of that block starts with, uh, let's say, four zeros, as you can see on the slides. So because hashing is a one-way function, the best way to guess is just by incrementing one to the nonce until the hash is valid. So the proof of work mechanism prevents anyone from tampering with the chain by making it computationally very hard for someone to recalculate the hashes of the following blocks. You might have heard of a 51% attack, which basically means that if someone has 51% of all the computational power of a blockchain, there is a small chance that he could theoretically, yeah, so theoretically he could actually hack the chain because he has more um, computational power than the rest of the network combined. I'll start by creating a small demo in JavaScript of uh, what proof of work would look like. So let's create a new file and we'll just call it bow.js. Uh, so we're gonna need the SHA256 function again. Let's just import that from crypto.js. All right. And we'll set the, the difficulty to five to start with. Yeah, difficulty if I can type equals five uh, the nonce notice that I use a, a const and a, a let you know const is, is a, an immutable variable and let is meant to change so a nonce since we're incrementing it all the time is gonna have to be a let and then the hash as well so let hash and we'll just start with you know an, an empty string I'll just do zero that's all right Okay, so um, we'll create a function called mine block, and the function will contain a while loop that basically increments the nonce until the first uh, couple of zeros, in this case five, are zeros. But yeah, I didn't say that right. So we'll just increment the nonce until the first couple of uh, characters of a hash are going to be zero and if that's the case we've solved the proof of work so while hash dot substring substring is literally just the string starting with zero and ending with difficulty while that is not equal to and here we're just going to create an array uh, of all zeros difficulty plus one and we'll have to use difficulty plus one since it's zero indexed. And we'll join that with a couple of zeros. I mean, five zeros. Okay, while that is not the case, increment the nonce. And we'll just console.log the nonce to see it in action. And the hash is going to be to calculate the hash again function. And we're gonna have to create that function. So function calculate hash, uh, and we'll return. This returns the SHA two five six of you know just let's just say a random string. I'll just call it blockchain, and then plus the nonce. You know, so now the nonce. The number is intertwined with the contents of the, the, the whole hash, let's just say. And then we'll do a two string. All right. Um, and when we found the hash, we'll console.log that as well. So nonce plus nonce and the hash. Okay, and this returns hash. It's not necessary, but we'll just do that. And then, of course, at the end, we have to call our function mine block. Okay, so let's just run that in the terminal, and you know, depending on the numbers, the number of zeros you've chosen, this might take a toll on your processor. I mean, it's probably gonna on mine, so let's just do that. Node proof of work.js. 
Okay, so now it's checking all the nonsense, and if it's found it, it's gonna console.log it. Oh, this is taking a while. Okay, so add nonce 327,000, uh, we've found the correct hash that starts with five zeros. So that was proof of work in action. Of course, with Bitcoin and stuff, this difficulty number is gonna be much, much larger. Uh, and this also increases as the network gets bigger and the computational power therefore gets bigger as well Okay, time to uh, implement the functionality again. So we'll start by adding the nonce field to our block and Then uh, we need a second function uh, a second method in our class Which is called you guessed it mind block and the mind block block takes as a parameter a difficulty and does what we've seen uh, just a second ago. So substring zero to difficulty, while that is not equal to our number of zeros. Okay, we'll increment the nonce. And we'll recalculate the hash. Right. And then, if we've done that, we'll just let it console.log something. Um, so, next. So, Let's say that uh, the block 10 got mined, then we'll just say that block 10 was mined with this hash. Right. Then the final thing we need to do in our block class is incorporate the nonce into the hash, the hash can calculation. I can't talk today. Okay, so. All right. Next up, op open up uh, the blockchain file and we'll globally define our di difficulty in the constructor. And uh, you know, let's just take four. Okay, now when we add a new block, we want to mine the block. So, new block dot mine block with the difficulty. So this makes that every time you want to add a new block, we'll have to mine the block. And that's going to take a while according to the difficulty you set. Okay, so I'm just going to remove our tests since we know that they work. Uh, and we'll just console.log. I mean, we'll just create a new blockchain and you're going to notice that this time it takes a little longer. Okay. All right, so it's now mining. And block one is of course the Genesis block, which doesn't need to be mined. All right. And as you can see, we've got nonces all over the place that create our uh, correct hashes. So this was of course the solution against uh, spammers and people who want to tamper with a blockchain that have a lot of computational power and all that. All right, thanks for watching guys. Um, in the next video, we'll create a small express server so that we can have some API endpoints to our blockchain and you know, add some add some blocks over HTTP and run them. And you, you know, you, you could even run the, the blockchain or your local network and have people of your family or something interact with it. So stay tuned and thanks for watching.